Mordak, the land of perpetual darkness. The region is plagued with witches, zombies, and nightmarish beings who live in the shadows. Bring light when you travel here, as you never know what can be watching from the dark. Mordak is made up of mostly dark pine forests, dense with fog that can rise from nowhere and often stays for days. Howls and groans can be heard within the woods, but a source is rarely found, leading many to believe they are wandering disembodied spirits, searching for a way home. The land is shrouded in perpetual twilight, the night never ending, the sun never rising a known memory. Many believe it's magical in nature while others believe it's a curse from an ancient demon or spirit. But in truth, nobody really knows. The roads and outskirts of towns and villages are lined with jack-o'-lanterns. The people believe the faces carved into the pumpkins, along with the light of candles, ward off evil spirits. Jack-o'-lanterns are carved daily and replaced as needed, each family unit responsible for lighting the area around where they live. Homes are built with black stone and never built with windows, as the people of Mordak believe leaving holes in a building will invite evil spirits. Shelves are cut into the outside walls and lined with candles. This is meant to scare away the dark and any lingering spirits. This leaves the outside walls thick with wax, a symbol of good luck since the wax has been blessed with the light of flame. Inside, dozens of candles and roaring fireplaces illuminate every room of every building. The people of Mordak never for a moment let the dark overtake them, believing once they do, the realm between the living and the dead will open. This leads many to have a fear of the dark, reasonable as many who venture into the shadows of night never return. The people of Mordak always keep candles on their body, within bandoliers, pockets, belts, or sacks, allowing for an immediate access to flame, which leads to a saying, never trust the light not in your hand. The people are extremely superstitious, believing black cats are bad luck, mirrors can trap and release souls, sneezing after saying one name means death and all keep trinkets of cold iron and a pouch of salt and sage in their pockets or around their neck, in case a demon should get too close. <laughs> Mordak is ruled by a king who holds a little control outside his city. Instead, each town or village is controlled by an elder, as those who manage to survive into old age are worthy of following. The people look up to these elders as their only source of leadership as each town or village is isolated, and beyond the light of civilization, the forest lurks with dangers. First are the hags, capable of flying, passing through solid surfaces and materializing at will. Wearing tattered, flowing rags, they are gangly with long black hair, white faces, and large black eyes. Standing eight feet tall, they have oversized fingers and toes. They feast on the souls of the living, flying through the pine forest far from the light of candles and jack-o'-lanterns. They will often wait underground and drag their victims into the dirt, suffocating them before absorbing their essence, leaving only a dry, withered husk. Next are the witches, often mistaken for hags. They live deep in the pine woods within overgrown cottages and covens of up to a dozen. Their bodies are aged and twisted, their faces wrinkled with crooked noses and skin dotted with hairy moles. They use illusion and charm spells to lure victims into their lair with the disguise of being a good-looking man or woman in distress. Once inside, they descend upon their victims like wild dogs, eating the victim's flesh while still alive, and then boil down their fats and organs into spells or wine. Their cottages are often decorated with bones, their walls layered with dry skins and stink of rot, 
and in the center, an iron cauldron where the witches create their potions. Some witches wander into town disguised as a young maiden and sell their potions or wine in exchange for things they may need, or to hide new victims. Unfortunately for the buyer, it isn't until too late do they realize what they have been drinking. Pumpkin heads roam the pine woods and are packs of leathery humanoids with jack-o'-lantern heads. They run on all fours, howling and growling and are always hostile, attacking with sharp claws, breathing fire, and biting with bone-like teeth protruding from its pumpkin head. Considered demons, their numbers are small, but increase as it gets closer to a full moon. During that time, most people in settlements hide, barricading their homes till the moon begins to wane. When the sky is bright, get out of sight. When the woods groan, hide in your home. The Dark Farmsteads was once a region of rich farmland long ago, before an unknown ancient blight cursed the grounds. The farms have long since been abandoned, and are in a state of perpetual decay. Old corn withers and dries, never growing and never fully dying. Undead pigs, cows, horses still graze the fields and live within dilapidated stables. Homes and windmills have fallen into disrepair but never collapsing. The wood has turned black and rotting. Doors are rusted closed and vines and moss often net entire buildings. Animated scarecrows wander the fields, killing anyone who enters, and uses the dead as feed for the undead livestock. No one is sure why the area is in a state of decay, or when it happened, but some believe it is an undead being slumbering beneath the once fertile fields, cursing the land for eternity. The Grave Fields, a region of cemeteries along the northern border, centuries old. Thousands dot the area and are rumored to be from a massive war once fought on the continent, all little historical documents can be found. Many graves are worn and have long since been pillaged of their valuables, but others remain unopened, holding enormous tombs consisting of entire dungeons going deep into the earth. The area is flowing with necromantic energies, and anything that dies in this region comes back as undead. This leaves zombies rising from their graves from a few dozen to hordes in the upper thousands. While most mingle mindless along the northern border, some hordes begin to wander, making their way south, wiping out entire settlements of Mordak with every thrust. Although effort has been put in place to dig up the graves and burn the dead, little has changed, and every few months to years, hordes continue to rise, as if new bodies form within the tombs. Every horde has been dealt with so far, but at a cost, and every generation of Mordak is left smaller than the one before it with some believing there is only a generation or two left before they can no longer stem the tide. Cults have come to the area, taking advantage of the natural necromantic energies that linger within the graves. Hoping to gain favor with demons and dark gods, some come for power, some to cause chaos, but all have exacerbated the problem by enriching and strengthening the necromantic energies of the area, causing the undead to rise in accelerated numbers. Now what was once a rare occurrence has become common, with some necromancers reporting that certain cemeteries have almost an unstoppable flow of undead rising from graves. The dangers are stacked against you should you play here, but if you can brave the dark of Mordak, remember, it's what you can't see that is coming for you. <laughs>